Shalom, I want to start giving all praises due to Yahweh, by Hashem, Yahweh's time. Respect and honor and charity to all your apostles, teachers, and servants of Yahweh, Hashem, Yahweh's out there laying their life down on the front line on the battlefield. This is another episode of Performing Arts. This is Brother Shaman Bassar. Abanawa Yahweh, Abanawa Yahweh Shah, Abanawa Yahweh, Abanawa Yahweh Shah. What I want to go on to, I want to finish. The camera had broke, I had a malfunction when I was out on the street. When I did Second Ezra chapter 15, 1 to 26. So I got half of the part up. So this is a continuation to finish off Second Ezra chapter 15, 1 to 26. Alright? And <clears throat> we left off at um Second Ezra verse 10. And it says, Behold, my people is led as a flock to the slaughter. I will not suffer them now to dwell in the land of Egypt, but I will bring them with a mighty hand and a stretched out arm and smite Egypt with plagues as before, and I will destroy all the land thereof. Now, how is the Lord going to strike Egypt again as before? That is a very key word. He's going to strike Egypt again as before. So the first Egypt is gone, but the second Egypt is what? It's spiritually talking about Babylon the Great, a.k.a. America, a.k.a. the Roman Empire, again. It's talking about the days and times that we're in now, okay? And Egypt, or so-called America, or um, which is so-called Egypt, is repeating, the Lord is going to repeat the same plague that he gave to Egypt, he's going to do it to them again. Okay? And it says, And I will destroy the land thereof. Verse 12, Egypt shall mourn, and the foundations of it shall be smitten with the plague and punishment that the Most High shall bring upon it. Now, let's do Deuteronomy 28, 58, and 60. Deuteronomy 28, 58 to 60. Deuteronomy 28, 58 to 61. And it says, If thou wilt not observe to do all the words of this law that are written in this book, that thou mayst fear the glorious and fearful name, the Lord thy power, the Most High, then the Lord will make thy, make thy plagues wonderful, and the plagues of thy seed, even great plagues of thy seed, even great plagues and a long continuance, and sore sickness, and a long continuance. Let's go to Daniel, another precept, Daniel 9 and 12. Extraordinary. Daniel 9 and 12. Daniel 9 and 12. Therefore have the Lord watched upon the evil and brought it upon us, did I, what, my bad, did I say Daniel 9, 12, and 15, right? And he hath confirmed his word, Daniel 9, 12, and 15. And he hath confirmed his word, which he spoke against us and against our judges, that judged us by bringing upon us a great evil. For under the whole heaven have not been done as have been done upon Jerusalem. As it is written in the law of Moses, all this evil is come upon us. 
yet made we not our prayer before the Lord our power, that we might turn from our iniquities and understand thy truth. The truth is this word coming out of this Bible, verse 14. And it says, Therefore have the Lord watched upon the evil and brought it upon them. For the Lord our power is righteous in all his works which he do. For we obey not his voice. And now, O Lord, our power that has brought thy people forth out of the land of Egypt with a mighty hand and has gotten thee renowned as at this day, we have sinned. We have done wickedness. Wickedly. I'm sorry. We have done wickedly. Okay. Now another precept is um. We're going back to Daniel. I mean, we're going back to Deuteronomy. We was at verse 59. Now we have verse 60. Moreover, he will bring upon thee all the diseases of Egypt, which thou was afraid of, and they shall cleave unto thee. And also, verse 61, also every sickness and every plague, which is not written, this is heavy, also every sickness and every plague, which is not written in the book of this law, then the Lord will bring upon them until thou be destroyed. Okay, so we in Second Ezra right now, fifteen sixteen, we the, the Lord is plaguing this earth. He's plaguing Egypt all over again. Okay, which is spiritually talking about America, aka Babylon, aka Roman, aka Egypt. Okay, the Lord is sending His plagues. Okay, for us is to show the world about His power. Okay, that He is the all I being, all all I seeing, all I being. The Most High, the Father of Spirits. Okay? So that's one of the things. Now we're going to go to Deuteronomy 7 and 15. Deuteronomy 7, verse 15. And the Lord will take away from thee all sickness and will put none of the evil diseases of Egypt which thou knowest upon thee, but will lay them upon all them that hate thee. Okay? And thou, now, and, and if you think about this, what happened in Egypt? Egypt, when, <clears throat> when we did the Passover, we took the sacrificed lamb, it's symbolic that the death angel, which we believe that that was Jahawashah, okay, that with the sickle, you know what I'm saying, that if we would put that blood over the post, of the door, that death angel will go past us. It would spare us. Okay? If we would have did what he said. And when we did that, that death angel spared all of Egypt. But it killed the firstborn of everything that Pharaoh had. Down to his children, to his first cattle. Everything. Okay? And then it says, And thou shalt consume all the people which the Lord, thy power shall deliver thee. Thy eyes shall have no pity upon them. You hear that? That I shall have no pity upon them. Neither shall thou serve their gods. For that will be a snare unto you. So one of the things that you can get out of this. Is that by um, praising the heathen gods. Those are a snare to you. Okay. That's why you're getting hit with these plagues. That's why the Most High is dealing with you. Okay. And that's why in this second coming. Which is the Lord's wrath. Okay. We have about Shemya Havashah. Coming. It's going not, he's not coming for peace. He coming for destruction. Okay? That's why you got this Corona 19. And we're going to get into that. That it's man, it's that it's, it might, man think he made it, but the Lord is sending out plagues through men to cause his purpose. Okay? Now we're going to continue to read to um, verse 13. Second Ezra chapter 2, verse 13 now. <clears throat> They that till the ground shall mourn, for their seed shall fail through the blasting in hell, and with a fearful constellation, woe to the world and them that dwell therein. For the sword and their destruction draw near, and one people shall stand up to fight against another, and swords in their hands. For there shall be sedition among men, and invading one another. They shall not regard their kings nor their princes. Now, when I read this part, you know what I'm thinking about? 
um, whether some believe it's true or not, but the law says that there's no law to put up unless he allowed it. I believe that's Romans 13, okay? That any government that's put in place, the law put that in place. So when you go against the, the government here, you're going against the, the, the ordinance of the Most High. Some people don't know that. So when you say fuck the police and all this to the police and all that other stuff, you're breaking the, 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 the Most High's laws, okay? Because the Lord set that government up for a dispensation of time. Then our true government's going to come in through Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shah, the Yahweh Shah and the, the saints that stand stiff in their lot. Okay? Behold, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And the kingdom of heaven is first and foremost preaching this gospel of truth to the elect of Israel, first and foremost. The other side of the two thirds is going to die on this side, and they're going to come back through us that stand so stiffly in their lot. Hallelujah. Okay? Now it says, For the sword for their destruction draws near, and one people shall stand up and fight against another, and swords in their hands. For there shall be seditions among men, and invading one another. They shall not regard their kings nor their princes. And the point that I was going to make, they shall not regard their kings nor their princes. Now, the kings are talking about the rulers on earth, right? A, a certain, a, like government, governor, governor Cuomo. Now, did not Governor Cuomo says six feet away from each other, um, don't come together in huddles, okay? Now, what are the people doing? You find them still partying, okay, coming together in huddles. When he says we should come against the, in huddles. So, that's, that's a sign right there. It says, for there shall be sedition among men and invading one another. They shall not regard their king. So the people don't regard their king or their rulers or the government that's sitting in place. They're breaking their rules. Okay, so if your ass get that, whether you believe it or not, you bring that judgment on yourself because one thing, you broke the Lord's rule. Okay? The second, it says, and, we read verse 16 still, and it says, and curse of their action, in the course, I'm sorry, in the, in the course of their action, shall stand in their power. A man shall desire to go into a city and shall not be able. That's another one to think about. When this corona was hitting up, hit, hitting worldwide, there was um, zones. And we used to always say that about martial law, that there was going to be zones put in, put in place. So you might say, yo, let me go travel or let me go see my mom. My mom's in Florida or and your mom be help and stuff like that. And you can't see it. Go see her. And that happened with us. Our father-in-law was sick, and he's in Florida. But due to the coronavirus and they've been sanctioned and zoned, we could not travel to go over there. Okay, and that was signed from the government. The government and, and and Trump said that we could not travel to go there. So that's that prophecy is come was in existence. Okay, whether if it goes for a long time and to the super duper power martial law come in and the RFID chip, this is beginnings of that. The heat is being turned up. Okay? And then it says, um, A man shall desire to go into a city and shall not be able. For because of their pride, the city shall be troubled. The houses shall be destroyed, and men shall be afraid. A man shall have no pity upon his neighbor, but shall destroy the houses with the sword and spoil their goods because of the lack of bread. People are going to be hungry. And for great tribulation, yeah, great tribulation. And it says, Behold, says the Most High, I will call together all the kings of the earth to reverence me, which are from the rising of the sun from the south from the east, and Lebanon, to turn themselves one against another and repay the things that they have done to them. Who's the them? The them is the nation of Israel, but first and foremost the elect which is the first fruit, okay? These are the ones that follow Yahweh wherever he goes. All right? Now, let's get into that verse. It says, Behold, says the Lord, it says the Most High, I will call together all the kings of the earth to reverence me, which are from the rising of the sun from the south, from the east, in Libanus, Libanus, to turn themselves one against another. Now to turn themselves one against another and repair
repay the thing that they have done to them, which is the nation of Israel, the first and foremost, the elect. But it says, um, from the south and the east, to turn themselves one against another. Now, how was he going to do this? I got a couple of precepts to go with that. Strong ones, too. Okay, the first one we're going to go to is um, Exodus 14, 17 to 18. I'm going to give you like five precepts on that particular verse. Exodus. Exodus 14, 17 through 18. Exodus 14, 17 through 18. The Lord shall fight for you, and you shall hold your peace. And the Lord said unto Moses, Wherefore cries thou unto me? Speak unto the children of Israel that they go forward. Right? Um, it says, But lift thou up thy rod, and stretch out thy hand over the sea, and divide it. And the children of Israel shall go on dry ground through the, through the midst of the sea. Here's the part. And, and I, behold, I will harden the hearts of the Egyptians, and they shall follow them. And I will get, and I will get me honor upon Pharaoh, and upon all his hosts, upon his chariots, and upon his horsemen. The key word, the Lord was hardened his heart. Okay? The Lord was hardened his heart. So in other words, the Lord was going to um, make Pharaoh... Put, let's say possess Pharaoh to carry out his bid, his bidding. So he, you see the Lord, you see in this verse, he said he hardened Pharaoh's heart. So when we read that verse, when it says um, to turn themselves one against another, the Lord hardened their hearts again in this second coming. Okay, the Lord's going to harden, harden all the kings of the earth's heart. Okay. To make them do his bidding. We got more scriptures on that. And then it says. And the Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord. Why is he doing this? So the Egyptians to know, know that he is the Lord. And that we are his people. Okay. When I have gotten me honor upon Pharaoh. Upon his chariots and upon his horsemen. Okay. Now the next scripture is um, Job 33 and 15. Job 33 and 15. In a dream, in a vision of the night, when deep sleep fall upon man and slumberings upon the bed, then he opened the ears of men and sealed their instruction. Who opened up the, um, the men um, and sealed their instruction? It is the Most High. So, just like we see how the Lord hardened Pharaoh's heart to do his purpose, this is what he wanted Pharaoh to do. In the, in, the, in the Egyptians, he wanted to kill them. He wanted to harden the heart. To, 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 um, this is what, to, to, um, to do his bidding, to do his will. So it was all set up to do, to, for them, to, for, the, for, for, for a brother to fall off or to do something wicked, it was set up. The Lord hardened his heart or that individual's heart to do what they did. All right, it was there, it was, it was set up and designed that way. Okay? Okay, then it says, um, then he opened the ears of men and sealed their instructions that he may withdraw a man from his purpose and hide the pride his, and hide pride from the man, turn man from his deed. So who's controlling man's action? Who's controlling these these men in in, in Second Ezra chapter um, twenty one, the latter B part was to turn to turn themselves one against another. Okay, the Lord is possessing these men to do his bidding. Okay, we got another one. We got another scripture. We got Isaiah 54 and 16. Isaiah 54 and 16. Isaiah 54 verse 16. Behold, I have created the smith that blow the coals in the fire. What is a smith? A smith is a person, his profession is making iron, metal, okay? So the Lord had used this smith, okay? It says, 
says, Behold, I have created the smith that blow the coals in the fire, and that bring forth an instrument for his work. For whose work? Okay? So he put into this German scientist to make these um, missiles. Okay? But the German scientist thinks that he came up with this atomic bomb missile. Or he came up with this instrument <coughs> used for destruction, used for cruelty. Okay? Or designed that way. The Lord got into this man's brain and made this man create that for his purpose. And what is those purpose for those missiles? To, for each nation to do what? To turn themselves one against another. To do what? To turn themselves one against another. Okay? Who do that? The Most High did that. Okay? To cause his purpose. So he stay in his pot. Okay? Alright? And that's why I named my channel Performing Arts. Okay? Because every man is a puppet in this in this movie. Directed by the Most High. Okay? Every man. Because the Lord is creating, the, the, he's designing all these things. He's putting the thoughts in a man's action for what he does. What's the next one? Um, Proverbs 16 and 9. Let's go to Proverbs 16 and 9. Proverbs 16 and 9. A man's heart divides his way, but the, but the Lord directs his steps. Read it again. A man's heart divides his way, but the Lord deceives his steps. Okay, what's the next one? The next one is Revelation um, 16 and 9. Let's go to that. Revelation verse 16 and 9. A man was scorched with great heat, blasphemy the name of the Most High, which hath power over these plagues. Who hath power over these plagues? The Lord. How, can the Lord use a plague for an instrument of destruction? Yeah, to cause his purpose to kill niggas. Like he did in Egypt, plague. That's easy to understand. The Lord stirred up those vibrations in the air and has... Um, the air being airborne, just like tuberculosis was a was a Egypt um, plague. When you look it up, so they say this COVID nineteen is a plague, a respiratory, a, a airborne plague. So can the plague be as an instrument, just like the MC, just like the missiles, the I, the IBM missiles? If the Lord to choose to use it to cause His ultimate purpose, and then it says. Where we at? Read that again. Start at 9. And men were scorched with great heat, fire, and blasphemy the name of the Most High, which have power over these plagues. Who has power over the plague? The Most High. And they repented not to give him glory. Right? They did not, they did not repent. And that's why the Lord is sending more plagues, because they did not repent. But the Lord set their hearts a harder, as in the days of Egypt. Because they were destined to be destroyed. Some vessels are made for honor. And some vessels are made for dishonor. Okay. And then it says. And, the, and it says. Which have power over the plague. And they repented not to give him glory. And the fifth angel poured out. His vial upon the seat of the beast. And the kingdom was full of darkness. And they gone their teeth. Their, their tongue for pain. Salakia, and blasphemy. The most high of the heaven called because of their pain and their sword and repented not of their deeds. So they repented not of their deeds. Okay? Now we're going to jump to 14 and 16. For there are spirits of devils working miracles which go forth unto the kings of the earth and the whole world to gather them together, to gather them to the battle of the great day of the most high almighty. Okay, read it again in 2nd Ezra chapter 15. 
I will call together all the kings of the earth to reverence me, which are from the rising of the sun. And then it says, to turn themselves one against another. Who designed that? Who orchestrated that? The Most High did. Who designed that and orchestrated that? The Most High did. So that's the divine, that's performing art. The Lord is the, the, the chief, the, 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 the head director. And all, all of us are just the characters. And the Lord is using us as each individual how he chooses to use us. Alright? The next um, the next one is Psalm 33 and 10. Psalm 33 and 10. They ain't going to answer that. Psalms 33 and 10. The Lord bring the counsel of the heathen to naught. What? The Lord bring the counsel of the heathen to naught. He make the devices of the people of no effect. Read it again. The Lord bring the counsel of the heathen to naught. He make the devices of the people of none effect. The Lord is behind everything. Then we got um, Joel 3, 2 to 12. Now, these are all precepts for 2nd Ezra, chapter 2, verse 20. The latter B part. Um, where, where we on? We said Joel 3. Joel chapter 3. Joel chapter 3. We're going to start at verse 2. Okay? And then it says, I will also gather all nations and will bring them down into the valley of Jasperfat and will plead with them there for my heritage. What is, it, what is he doing all this for? To show his power, but also to show his love. Don't F around with his people. Say it again. Don't F around with his people. And a lot of you nations, especially the evil, wicked, wicked, wicked ones, the Lord said, you're going to get double. Fill your cup up double. Okay? And, and just like we had a proportion of that cup, you're going to get double. A lot of y'all ain't going to make it. A lot of y'all ain't going to make it. What goes around, comes around. And don't say you didn't do it, because the Lord said, if you any other part of those nations, especially the, uh, the Amalaks, the evil, wicked ones, you got a price to pay for what you did to his people, the apple in his eye. And that's what we're reading right now. And this is why he's going to send destruction here for his beloved, for his elect sake. And I will also gather all the nations and I will bring them down into the valley of Jephthah and will plead with them there for my people and for my heritage, Israel. Woe, Israel, whom they have scattered among the nations. And parted my land. Jump to 12. Let the heathen be waking. And come up to the valley of Jaffaphat. For there I will sit to judge all the heathen round about. There you go. So the Lord is doing that. Okay. Now let's go back to 2nd Ezra. Remember we're doing 2nd Ezra 15, 1 to 26. Now we have verse 21. 2nd Ezra 15, verse 21. Like as they do yet this day unto my chosen. What? Like as they do this very day to like as they do yet this day unto my chosen. So will I do also and recompense in their bosom. Thus says the Lord Yahweh, my right hand shall not spare the sinner, and my sword shall not cease over them that shed innocent blood upon the earth. The fire is coming in. Yeah, who shed innocent blood from the beginning of time? Who conquered everything? The Native Americans were there. Who conquered with bloodshed? Gave them chicken pot. We got so many stories. This, these, these Amalek, the evil wicked one, have a list. 
and it's, it's reaching the heavens now. And the Lord about to, that, that's why the Lord is sending this destruction. Okay? Because it's time. The time is up. And it's time for us to get ready. Celebration time. Come on. Celebrate. It's a party going on right here. Let's celebrate. And that's what we're going to do. Because we've been broken down. Okay? We've been, we've been, um, we had a hard night life for us. It's a hard night life for us. And we had it. You know? And we still going to it. A lot of us is due to us breaking the cup. Lord, that's your commandment. But this time he's going to put it in our inner part. He's going to put it in our mind. We're going to know it automatically. So eventually all Israel is going to be saved. But these things have to take place. But your salvation is near. And then it says, The fire is going forth from his wrath and have consumed the foundation of the earth and the sinners like the straw that is kindled. Woe to them that sin and keep not my commandments. Woe to them that sin and keep not my commandments. Woe to them that sin and keep not my commandments, says the Lord. I will not spare them. I will not spare them. Okay? Wait, hold on. I will not spare them. Isaiah 58 and 6. 58 and 1. Isaiah 58 and 1. Cry aloud. What? Cry aloud. Spare not. Lift up thy voice like a trumpet, the Bible, and show my people their transgression, and the house of Jacob their sin. So this is the greatest love ever. This is greater this is the greatest love ever. When we out in the highway and byway, we warning you. When we go this, when we blow this. That's the trumpet. We sound an alarm. That's letting you know somebody coming to harm you. All right. Okay. And this is the spiritual trumpet that we playing, we blowing now to wake up our people, the elect first and foremost, because the other people is the vessel of destruction. Even our people, the, the two thirds, their destiny is to die on this side. So, when does it say? It says, cry aloud, spare not, lift up that voice. The voice is just fighting. This is the trumpet. And when we out there, we speak, we got to speak with, with boldness, authority. People's lives are at stake. So, this Bible, when we shouting out and we reading it loud, danger. Get your act together. Repent. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Now, let's go back to 2nd Ezra. It says, <clears throat> verse 24, Woe to them that sin and keep not my commandments, says the Lord. I will not spare them. Go your way, you children, from the power. Defile not my sanctuary. For the Lord knows all them that sin against him. And therefore, deliver he then unto death and destruction. For now are the plagues come upon the whole earth. For now are the plagues come upon the whole earth. And you shall remain in them. For the Most High shall not deliver you. Because you have sinned against him. Alright? Let's go to Luke. 12, 39, and 40. Luke 12, 39, and 40. And this know that if the good man of the house had known what hour the thief would come, he would have watched and not have suffered his house to be broken through. That's right. That's what the watchman is. That's what the trumpet is. You prepare the people to, for danger before it comes. So you sound an alarm, which is the book. This is the gospel. 
you tell them, yo, get your act together because the kingdom of heaven is, is near. Just like the days of Lenore, they was all drinking and partying. Party and bullshit. Party and bullshit. Boom! And sudden destruction came. Okay? So this is, this is, we are the unprofitable servants doing what we're supposed to do. It doesn't matter what you see, but if the Lord calls us, this is what you got to do. Okay? And some of you, you know what I'm saying, you talk about everybody else, what they should do, how they should speak, how they should live, but we ain't seeing you doing nothing for the Lord. All you're doing is yapping your mouth. You know? And some men don't have the same way of teaching or the same gifts as you. Okay? But if they out there doing it, if they even give a prophet a glass of water, even if they help him, they may still be saved. So be careful who you condemn that say that not a man of the Lord, they're not part of this and they're part of that. You, you know what I'm saying? Because it also says in the book that the first shall be last, the last shall be first. So don't think too much of yourself, buddy boy. Okay? Don't think too much of yourself. Because you may not be of the elect. None of us know we are the elect. That's why we say that humble. We don't know. But we're doing the best way we the best damn thing we can. Sincerely and true. For real. We're really trying. Those who know if you're really trying. And the Lord knows if you're really trying. And like they say, we're taking it a list. We're checking it twice. But that's the Lord. Not no damn Santa Claus. You're going to find out if you're naughty and nice. Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shah is coming to town. <laughs> and then it says, um, Luke 12, 39, right? Be ye therefore ready also for the Son of Man comes at an hour when you think not. So when you chilling, as soon as you falling back, and you slapping, and you getting laughed, From doing the Lord's bidding, boom, he coming back. He coming back. So that just lets you know to be on point, just like you on the street. 